Welcome to FreeCorelDrawTraining.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about a really cool tool, and this is the Mesh Fill tool. Now, in terms of accessing the Mesh Fill tool, notice on the left-hand uh, side of my workspace, the toolbar, it's uh, the very last option at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and click the nib to get access to all of the features in that category. And we're going to focus in on this Mesh Fill tool. Of course, M on your keyboard is the tool that will activate the Mesh Fill. Now, why would you use the Mesh Fill? The Mesh Fill is a tool that will blend multiple colors together in an object. So if you ever you know, want to take an ordinary object like this lotus uh, flower that we have on our workspace and make it you know, almost realistic and give it some dimension and give it some texture, the Mesh Fill is an excellent way to, uh, to achieve that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to activate it. So go ahead and select the uh, option. I'm going to click on an object. We'll focus in on this centermost object, the uh, teardrop-shaped object. So notice when I click on it, we kind of get this grid, and we get a 2x2 two two grid. Now you can increase your grid, so if you wanted to blend in more colors and have more control, you can go ahead and increase the grid uh, you know, uh, controls here. Now the process and the workflow is very, very simple. Once you create a grid on an object, we can go ahead and drag and drop colors onto that grid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm left mouse clicking on a color. And anytime you do that, you're going to get sort of relative colors to that uh, core color. So these are, uh, think of this as a color family. We have this graduating from dark to light. So we can grab different, you know, complementary tones. I'm just going to go ahead and select a tone, and I'm going to drag and drop that on the inside of a grid. Notice when I release, it, go ahead, it, it applies color to that specific region of the grid. Well, I'm going to go back and I'm going to select some complementary colors and go ahead and drag and drop that into the grid system. Now, when you're doing this, pay, pay you know, particular attention to kind of creating a play on light. So think of how would light affect this particular design? You know, is this, should this look like it's top lit or lit from the bottom or left or right hand side? So just uh, kind of keep that in the back of your mind when you're laying this out. You know, how would light really impact this? And, and the better you, know, you do that, the more realistic it's going to tend to look. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and finish this particular design here. Now, uh, we can see the effect on screen. The one thing I like to do is to kind of give this a little more sort of realistic look, is I like to blend the colors together. Um, so there's a really great way to do that. Where my mouse is now hovering on the property bar, it says Smooth Mesh Color. And of course, the indicator here says Reduce the Appearance of Hard Edges in a Mesh Fill. So this is really important, especially if you're using radical colors. Um, you can really help to synthesize and blend those together a little more naturally uh, by selecting the smooth mesh color. So that just you know, helps to, to, once again, blend these together a little bit more uh, naturally, and that will leave you with a better result. So you can see as I deselect the mesh tool, you can see the effect that we have on screen now. You know, we had a flat, you know, one color object, and now we have an object that really has a sense of dimension, and you know, we have that color blend together. It looks beveled, almost uh, three-dimensional. Uh, well, in terms of taking that effect and applying it to the balance of our design, there's a really great way to do that. So we'll go back to our mesh uh, fill tool here. What I'm going to do is click on another object that I want to create the same effect. I'm going to go to this object now where my mouse is hovering. It says Copy Mesh Fill. So now that I've selected another object, I'm going to go ahead and activate the copy uh, you know, function. And my pick tool has been replaced by this big black arrow. So what you need to do is click on the object that you want to copy and you can see how that replaces it or copies it to that object that we just selected. So we'll continue that process. We'll just copy, select, copy, select, and just continue that process until you're satisfied. Now what you may want to do is you may want to select an object and copy the properties of something unique. And that may transform the way the light appears. Or we can continue to drag colors into the, uh, the mesh. So these are all still interactive. So if you really kind of want to give this a little sense of uniqueness and you don't want to have it to be so uniform. Do you see I can go and continue to drag and drop color in, into the, the design to, to just make it look a little bit more realistic, you know, give a sense of color or a light play here. So go click on an, another object, we'll copy the properties and just continue this workflow until your entire um, object has been uh, created here. We'll go grab properties from this guy and copy that over. And you can see this really doesn't take long to uh, do. So you'll spend most of your time concentrating on creating maybe the first object, you know, getting something that's agreeable, and then we'll go copy all those properties back over. So you can see how really it takes no time to, to really give a lot of dimension to an ordinary graphic by using the mesh properties. This is a really great way to accent and highlight 
you know, complex uh, vector-based designs to give it shadow, uh, to give it dimension. So this, this really has a lot of application, uh, especially with flesh tones and just objects that need a little more you know, decoration to them. Now the other thing that I really like about this is the ability to always come back and, and edit this. So once again, if I'm not satisfied with the colors, maybe I want to give a specific object a little more sort of definition, I can continue to drag and drop colors onto this uh, to give those changes. The other thing I like is uh, that I can treat this like a vector object, meaning I have the full flexibility to say take this and maybe duplicate it, and I can change the size without losing any dimension or quality. So it still retains all of its vector-based properties, uh, but I can you know, scale it and treat it uh, as though it were a vector, although it has a what appears to be a bitmap-based or a raster-based effect to it. So I invite you to experiment with this. Uh, there's really no wrong or right way to, to use it. Um, but it definitely will give a lot of dimension to your uh, designs.